He used to be <coughs> out on the corner. He was dealing in drugs. Got himself a bar ah. chair and gave off some cuts. Where's the now bucket? A podcaster. His life, he'll talk about it with us. And now it's Jeff FM. Jeff FM. Just keep that there. I might have to throw up any second. These alternative medicines are really getting to me. I'm up to 64 pills a day. Feeling good. I'm feeling good. It's good to be back. Another episode of Jeff FM. Hold on. Let me do my... Jeff! Yeah, baby. We're back. We're going to be starting from the bottom of the barrel here, and that is why I had Christian here last week, because he's the only guy I know that is an absolute fucking nobody. We found him on Craigslist. Who should we have this week? I don't know. Maybe the guy that's canceled, and he's just slightly more relevant than Christian, and he got all his fame from his friend and his How ex-girlfriend. That yes, that's right. He is Mike Magikalakalak. Who gives a fuck? It doesn't matter anyway. We're all living in a simulation. <laughs> False alarm. False alarm. It's not going to happen yet. Uh, I'm grateful for my guest today because he is currently in a time of misery. He is being canceled. I've been there. I know what it feels like. It's dark. I like mud. I'm always in the mud. <laughs> That's right. The mud is not fun for some. And I can say that when I was down in the mud, it is not a nice place to be, especially when you're an ex drug abuser like myself and i'm sure many others watching this show and the guest of the show has used a lot of drugs and when everybody hates you and you feel like your life is over sometimes you just want to go back to just sticking a needle in your arm and just letting all the pain go away temporarily but that's not how we deal with our problems anymore we've learned a lesson there's alternative ways to treat your depression and that's talking about it mike's not here it was supposed to be a six o'clock episode it is six <clears throat> oh five and he's not here so we'll fucking throw him a call was that him oh that's mike sheffer <laughs> come on in Just come sit down over there you put the headphones on. Are you recording right now? Is this for real? We um, we're just we're just warming up. I'm about to FaceTime the guest that didn't show up, and we're gonna find out why he's not here. You're live on the show. We're wondering where you're at. Wait, you're what? How is that possible? Because we're innovative over here, bro. It's not like some fucking low budget shit you do over That's at Impulsive. A dark piece. I got guys wait, from SpaceX I, wait, in you, the booth. Go flip wait, can around. You show see them. Me or no? We, I could see you. Yeah. You want to see the guys? Show them you. Show them who's pressing the buttons, so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Is this how we're doing this? No, you were supposed to be here at six o'clock. So I got this other mic here, this fucking jackal, this asshole came to promote his podcast. We had a collaboration planned at 6 p.m. You don't want to just do this like this? You want me to come there? It's up to you. I'd rather have you. You live 10 minutes away. You're an influencer, Mike. You live in L.A., you know? Whatever. I'll, 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 just, come, I'll just come there. Right now. We're having a good time, bro. We got LaCroix. No, I know. It's fun here. Yeah, there's... There's nothing I want more than to collaborate with you right now. You have uh, nothing uh, else going on. I'll, I, I you mean, know the game. <laughs> Dave Portnoy. Cut the fucking Dave Portnoy sound bites. He's not on here anymore. We're done. We squashed that beef. We ended it. He's dead. We put the nail in the coffin. I'll just put on some clothes and come over there, bro. Okay. All right. We're excited to have you here. Where the fuck? Wait, is this part? There is we go. Finally. So, I have three fucking morons in the bathroom. Finally, they fucking hit a, a sound bite at the right timing comedically. <laughs> All right, that all was right. Me. That was me, Jeff. No, oh, that was Bye. you, Stephen. Best Bye. employee. Hell yeah. That was me. Are you gonna stop recording now that I'm here? Um, no. We could talk to you for a little bit, Mike, because um, we got some time to kill. So this was what Mike, the co-host episode, and you're just calling as many co-hosts named Mike as you could find. I forgot you were even a fucking co-host. I forgot you did anything but fucking try to sue people. <laughs> I'm, I'm healing up. The sunglasses will come off soon. You know, we're getting there. The eye surgeries are coming along nice. Uh, my eyes a millimeter too high on this side. If you could look at it, it's kind of. You still talking about it? I know. One <laughs> eye. Making the shit out of this though. God damn. This this red line What's is. That? That's new. This is microdermabrasion. It's scar treatment. So I'm trying to get rid of that. How handsome are you trying to get? Like I'm trying to be the best I can, Mike. You moved I, out here and now you're doing all this plastic surgery. I thought you were a New York guy. You came out to LA. Yeah, I chill, chill, with plastic chill with plastic surgery. It's reconstructive surgery. I'm okay. trying to get back to what I was. I'm not trying to enhance myself or make myself look like somebody I'm not. I'm the same person I was ever since I was a little baby. I had big chubby cheeks. 
my whole life I people used to people used it. to pinch him you know i get accused of botox you know it, it, it is what it is you want to, you want to have a water over there you can have a little water that looks like a bottle of piss jeff and then we left him out in the sun for a couple of days <laughs> was this nerf made this <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it it's just a little sun yellowed oh like, look at us jeff we look good huh it's nice over here huh very yeah, innovative this, this is pretty cool to see uh a live action who's in the bathroom is kyle in the, in the shower these are cdc guidelines you're following with that no it bathroom? has nothing to do with the cdc he has gilbertson syndrome it has nothing to do with the the other thing the other virus that comes from china <laughs> i'm not gonna say it kyle is in the shower because he has Gil gilbertson syndrome it's not going to be the topic of every episode he's he's fading we're losing kyle but you already lost christian what happened to him um, they don't like fans. Didn't like him. I listen to my fans. I read the comments. They don't like him. They want him out. Booted. He's done. So you brought the most popular co-host you had, Mike Sheffer, back. For you you were hated by. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get Mike Majala like over here for uh, a couple weeks now, but he's been going through a real tough time. That was so just FaceTime. Yeah, yeah. He's Logan Paul's friend mm -hmm. and Lana Rhodes' ex boyfriend. But he's also become a friend of mine recently because we can relate to a lot of stuff. And that's why I wanted to have him on. Also, because I don't want to feel pressured to have big celebrities on here every week. I want normal average Joes like you and my friends that will come by and like guys like Mike. You know, it's a, a lot more comfortable environment because at the end of the day, everybody's coming here for, you, you know, they're coming here for, you know. No, it, I mean, you got a button for that? I mean, uh, Everybody's coming here for me, you know? If I'm here for you, Jeff. So I got I some stuff I want to talk about. I want to talk about how... Well, first of all, let's talk about that, the sound bites. People saying we're ripping, ripping off H3. I know some of you guys watch Frenemies and you think that they created the soundboard. You seven-year-olds. Uh, have you ever heard of the fucking radio? This is Jeff FM. This is a radio show. Radio is a thing that you have in the car that if you don't plug your phone into the aux cord, you press one of the channels... And then they do shit like this. They, they fucking... Turn it off, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. Do you practice with this or you just only no, practice just when you're doing it I'll practice, I'll practice with time. I want to see people see my growth as we go. To even fucking watch Howard Stern. I mean, sound bites have been a thing for fucking thousands of years. People have been using them since the fucking pyramids. The stones, yeah. Yeah, they, they had hieroglyphics on their fucking sound boards. Do you want to talk, share your opinion on the Israel-Palestine conflict? Whose side are you on in the war? <laughs> Jeff, you're trying to be professional here. You have people paying you money yeah, now for these bro, episodes. I, I, listen this to isn't me. free Listen to me, YouTube listen to me, listen to me. You got listen. a Patreon, you got a responsibility to these people. Listen. You have to put out quality content. You can't just be Okay, I will, I will address, I will address the problems that are going on in the world but i am one man and i can only do so much here with my team of employees from they left spacex to come work for me here in the bathroom i think i saw elon talked about one of those kids on they're pissed life. Yeah. they're pissed because elon's crashing the market and then he's manipulating it's going up and down and then i, I put all my money in and then I, I fucking i got scared and i sold it and then it shot back up today but you know i'm not complaining because life's good you know whatever it's okay i'm just trying to do my best over here and yeah, there is big problems in the world and I'm not gonna pick a side like Gigi Hadid did. And I know you stand by one side. Um, the side I stand on is the side of humanity. Loyalty, yeah, lo well, you're loyal to your people and I respect that. My people are the human race, that's, that's what I believe. Nice, good answer. You're a fucking good, I'm you, the best, you, wanna, you wanna be my publicist? Uh, can I, yeah, sure, do you need a publicist? Yeah, you need hit a publicist. Hit China, hit China, hit <laughs> China. China. China, China, China. <laughs> it's kind we of need nice. serious help over here. China, 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 I, I, I think China. you just need a little bit of practice, but that's not your style. You just go in 100 miles an hour, blindfold on, let's just crash. We'll pick mm -hmm. up the pieces later. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, nothing makes sense mm -hmm. and it's all it looks like a big mess. Yeah, I, I just, uh, we got to cut to the sponsors for a second. Today's you got episode, sponsors on yes, this episode? Yes, today's episode is sponsored by heroin. <laughs> what agency? If you want to ruin your life, do heroin. That's a dark piece. That's uh, that's it for the sponsors for today. I don't know if that was the exact talking points that they wanted me to say. That's all we got really so far. Um, the rest of the questions were for Mike Majalala. Do you want to ask me the questions that you're going to ask him and I can just answer them to the best of my ability? How, how is it dealing with everyone hating you? Does, it, does everyone like hate Receiving me? hate comments and, and gossip sites talking about you saying you're a misogynist and you're uh, a cloud chaser and... You know, you look like a low-budget Adam Sandler. 
Are you pointing these questions at me or the guy? They actually work next? for both of you, yeah. which is surprisingly. <laughs> and you guys both name is Mike, so that's very funny and interesting. So I guess yeah. you could go ahead and answer that one for Mike. A low budget Adam Sandler is it? Was that the question? Yes. Um, Adam Sandler was my idol growing up. I looked up to, to guys like him. I know you look up to fictional characters like people from Goodfellas and The Godfather, but uh, you know he was a. <laughs> Do you like having this power over me, or if you don't like something I'm saying, you can just cut me off with a button? Yeah, we prepared for Mike magic. How's things going with you? Pretty good, man. I, I'm as good as I've been in a long time. How's your Tesla? Seriously? It's, it's great. I think Elon just updated the Tesla. It feels a lot faster now that I've been driving around like the last couple of days, so that's been really fun. Have you checked your testosterone levels lately? Yeah, why did my voice Because your just voice cracked. just cracked. I think your estrogen levels are, are, are peaking. Yeah, uh, that was a big problem for me growing up. The first day of high How's school. How's your sex drive? It's great. Uh top notch oh that sounds dangerous almost too much the way you answered that i've been seeing a new girl so things have been going pretty good okay good um, for you it must yeah, be nice it is yeah it it's, makes no sense at all uh, i've been dealing with my eye surgery so i haven't been hanging out with many girls because i'm insecure about my eye the worst is definitely over you've i saw you at your lowest and i don't think i've seen it at your highest yet i think you're still you're still on your way there you're so dumb i don't i can't even believe that i'm answering your question you know i've been an asshole this first half of this episode and I like to apologize for being so narcissistic and it's really just an insecurity. It's it's the way I deal with it. I, I make fun of other people because I'm insecure myself right now. I'm dealing with some serious mental issues and I'm taking all my anger out on all the, all the people here that come along to help me. Steven, you put on sunglasses too? You told me to. <laughs> but where did you get those ones? Switch sunglasses with me. I want those. Leave the music on. Leave the music on. But I want them. Mike, can you can you swap these? Can you swap our sunglasses? Yeah. Can't have the fucking the interns outshining. Can you, can you hear me that white thing right there? No, 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 quick, no, no, quick, quick, no, quick, no, quick, no, quick. No, Mike, take it with you. Fuck! No, 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 no. I'm no, fiending. I'm gonna freak out. Steven, what the fuck is this? You took my vape. Are you I'm using fiending. again? Not in. No, Oscar took it for me, and I haven't ha been able to hit it in like an hour. An hour? Bro, th this is going to kill your fucking lungs. You're 18 years old. You're going to die by the, you're, before you could even fucking drink alcohol legally. Bro, you're going to die before Gilbert and it's me. And this is even lamer than fucking Kyle's Gilbertson's disease. If it's mine. This is... My, my body, my choice. It's, if you're going to fucking do anything, smoke what? cigarettes. <laughs> I will buy you a goddamn pack of cigarettes. Smoking a damn USB cord. Cigarettes look cooler. It's, you're bringing down the whole reputation of the whole crew here. What you guys do reflects back on me. If you're walking around smoking that stupid USB cord, then, oh, Jeff's whole crew's soft. They smoke fucking... You know they the smoke game. jewels. I don't do it to not act, so, act soft or hard. Wait, you're making us all look hard. bad. I just I can see why you call me here, Jeff. This banter is this is painstaking to, to watch. You talk to three guys in a bathroom and you needed a I I, I went for a Dana White too. What's your relationship with Jonah right now? Oh, uh, I haven't seen him in a while. I think people want to know what your current status with Jonah is. I saw you went by the restaurant and uh Well, my current status is I was struggling with the barbershop show. I was struggling with my vision to see the hair. I want to be the best at everything. I might not be the best at one specific thing, but I'm trying to combine all of my skills and bring them into one thing that I could create something original and be the best at that. Whether it's this or whether it's a fucking barbershop show, I'm going to give it my all. If I got one fucking eye or no eyes, I'm going to keep on going no matter what. Hell yeah. You know what? Let's take a caller. I want to call my favorite person ever. Lincoln was a guest on the Beefy Boys, and he was the star of the show, even though he didn't walk away with the money because he was cheated by Jonah when Jonah did his weight cut, and he water-loaded before the weigh-ins because he had inside information that we were going to be doing the weigh-ins, and we were going to start up My a new series. Will, will yes, words. so he drank two gallons of water the day of the weigh-in. Oh, now, two gallons of water, eight pounds. So he put on 16 pounds of water before the show even started. Yeah. So all he had to do was chill, piss out that water throughout the week, wow. and then he's 16 pounds ahead. Guess what he won the competition by? Eight pounds? 16 pounds. <sighs> he literally did nothing and took the fucking money out of hard working people. Airsoft worked his ass off. We thought we were going to have to airlift him out. We thought we were going to have to get a helicopter to get him off the top of that mountain. But Lincoln, I'm proud of you, man. You were the only one to continue sticking with the beefy boys project and uh, i just oh. i miss you miss you guys too
And we're just starting up this new podcast because, you know, we've been running into some trouble. You know, the internet, people like to get into it with each other. So now we have a voice of our own and we've been pretty successful. Last week, we took out some blackmailers. We took out some guys, uh, that this weird show of these two guys, they were, they were saying that I was milking my uh, traumatic accident and so makes no sense yeah. and, and makes no sense at all i wish i had that button here makes Hell no yeah. sense at all we will be yeah. cutting you in on uh royalties for your sound bites here because they are the funniest moments still of, of the podcast and man it's just so great to see you i i, I have so many things i want to tell you but how are you doing oh well, man i'm I'm pretty good um ups and downs but Currently down in Florida right now. Are you down in Florida? Yeah, took a little fishing trip today. Oh man, there's nothing like a good old fishing trip to clear your head, you know? All you got to do is just go out on a boat with your brothers, maybe your old man, and go catch a fish, and that's it. That's what life's about. Almost caught a grouper earlier. You hooked them? Didn't set the hook. Yeah, you'll get them next time. How about everything else? What's uh, ups and downs? You know, we're all facing ups and downs. Everybody is in the world. Suicide rates are higher than ever. Depression is higher than ever. It's a real thing. And that's why I think, you know, have you caught up with my series where I, I opened up about the whole accident? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Very intense stuff. Well, I got to be honest. You were one of the one of the main people that inspired me to open up because I know it takes a lot. You know, guys like us, we, don't, we, we just want to go on stage and tell jokes. But at the time... I feel like people are not necessarily just wanting to see people lie about happiness. We're going through a tough time, all of us. So, you know, yeah. it helps to know that other people are experiencing things like that, too. So I've been getting bullied by by Jeff for a little bit, but I know he means it with love. He's he's a tough exterior, but inside I know he's, you know, he's a good guy. He's got a lot of love to give. And I know you, you were able to showcase that through some of the work you guys did together. And just wanted to say, uh, you know, I, I would like to meet you someday. Hopefully that's sooner than later. And uh, Jeff, you, thank you for introducing him to the world that, uh, you know, I, I didn't get to know. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, having a platform, one of the most beautiful things about it, you know, it's not just about the money. It's that I'm able to find talent. I was going into my eye surgery. I don't know if you saw that it's on the Patreon, but I was going into my eye surgery in oh, Utah. Man. And that's when I discovered you and we were recording and Oscar came up to me. It's like one of the Patreon deleted scenes videos. And I was like, man, this guy has talent and I got to get him out here. I, I want people to know about him. What's your progress, your your weight loss progress so far since It's all since good. That show. doesn't, I mean, you know. He's lost weight. He's lost more weight after the show. He's the, I, I think he's the only one that kept going after the show. Is that right, Lincoln? 30 pounds since the... God damn. 30 real pounds too. Not like the controversy. I don't know if you heard the controversy with Jonah, but he did cheat on the show. And we are pressing charges, but pressing charges the way the way I press charges, yeah, the New York way. Lincoln, I'm gonna hit you up after the show. I want to catch up with you for real, like you know, just you and me, man to man. Hey, hey, get down, sit down, sit down here, sit down here, sit down. Uh, Mike's a big fan of you too. This is our main guest that we want to have on the show. Sit down, so we can get you on. I, you really got the heat uh, in here, huh? gra grab the mic, grab the mic. Oh, you really got the heat bumping in here, huh? Is it hot in it's here? A bit, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit it's steamy, thirsty. yeah. It's, it's ice cold. Me. Just take a, take a sip of the water. This is, this is, uh, this is urine. No, that's just, we, it was in there, got a little sun on it. We had it out, we keep them outside here because we don't got a lot of room in the house. So, they're all the so same. Good. They're all the same this water. Urine. Too. It's, it's not urine. urine. You think I'm gonna, I'm bring is on? this supposed to be like another play on like hair? No, this water is not. Mike. I'm, like, I'm so sorry. Miss wait, wait. Bye, Lincoln. Everybody say bye. No, Lincoln. no, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> let, let, let Mike say hello because Mike's a big fan. Mike, oh, Mike's, yeah. Mike, Mike is a part. Oh, Are you fucking serious? You just missed him. God dang. What a shame. Okay, Mike, uh, your your time here is done. If you could you just, leave? if you want to hang out, you can, but I'll keep your you. words. Hey, keep I'm, your, Mike, nice I'm, I'm like also good Okay, that's that's enough. I like going him. On. I like him. Just in general. He's well, five, you guys have a lot in common. You're both named Mike. Okay. You're both uh, look like Adam Sandler wannabes. You both have had. I'm not. I, I have curly you hair. You both have a sex addiction. They're both clout chasers. 
Who's that guy in the bathroom? He has Gilbert syndrome. It's a disease. It's not. That's not the. That's not the white supremacist from the vlog, right? He, Do you remember? Oh, no, wait, no, 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 no. Dude, no, that's not the same guy. That, no, it's not me. We gave him the wrong haircut. Okay. For it. Wait, yeah. is that the same guy? I, my intention was no. to give him. It is the same guy. My intention was to give, to give him a haircut that made him look like a badass drummer because he looked like piece. such a such a, a soft just a, like a marshmallow. He looks like the softest human ever and I wanted to make him look like a badass and he just looks like a baby now. He looks like a giant baby and a white supremacist giant baby, but he's not. He loves all people equally. Most of his friends from Maryland, where he's from, are African-American. So he's not a white supremacist. I can Got vouch it. for that. I give you my word. But back to... Do I... It, it. Am no, I, I mean, they, they, it does it, the technology got that we it, have here. It. So I just, I don't have to clap as well, right? Super innovative over here, you know? How'd you get all that money? Did you end up... Uh, I'm actually hurting. Oh, I'm doing good today. Coinbase you, uh, crypto is back, is back up. Yeah, I saw that. I was stressed, man. Yeah. But you didn't sue anyone, right? For what? <laughs> okay, enough for the... F no, I I chose not to sue. I know I know some people so in this scary. room do not agree with that. Who's who's that? Oh, you actually is his. Uh, he's no, like I'm just a, his only Jewish friend, so he assumes I'm an attorney. He assumes I'm a publicist. He assumes I'm good with money. Is your last name? Does let me. Uh, I mean, you know, fuck it. I'm going off the book. I don't need it. I had notes. I had questions for you, but you had shit prepared. To be honest, I just want to learn about you. I want to. I want to know how you're doing right now. I mean, I'm good today. <clears throat> the thing about it is like, I've been very vocal since I started making content and like coming on the scene here that I struggle with anxiety and depression and, you know, a, a host of other mental um, issues um, that played in a lot with like addiction and stuff like that. And I think anytime, you know, a bunch of sh uncomfortable shit happens, even if it was just the uncomfort of the transition of um you know leaving the house that i've been at and logan moving to puerto rico and the breakup and all the shit that's happened over the past why are you making that little smirk i'm not making a smirk i'm just that's how I, that's how my face is i just kind of like I'm, when i'm when i'm listening i i don't i disregard what my facial expression is but it could just you, do anything are you out, the kind of guy that laughs at funerals i i mean i make a joke out of everything that's right, just right. what i do I, I try to make fun of every single thing when right. i'm in pain that's i think when i'm on my funniest you know because <clears throat> There's just more stuff to joke about, I think, when you're fucking, when you go broke, when you lose all your money, it, that's that's comedy, you know? I don't know. There's just, I just like to look at things like everything's a big joke. I mean, if you can do that, that's extremely powerful. I can do that when I get in the zone. When I get in the mode, when I get in here, I know it's time to fuck around, and this is the time to make people laugh. And I do it when I fuck with people. I can go to the, the fucking, I go to Starbucks, and I'll have a conversation with the barista and try to make them laugh. Right. But, you know, you put out a lot of content you do a podcast you guys when you were content loading for logan to leave puerto rico you guys were doing what four three episodes a day we were doing i think we did 12 or 14 episodes in the six days before he left yeah that's insane Something like that that was it was wild alongside you know the night shift which was an episode a week twitch streams every day um whatever other business i don't have any employees personally i don't have an assistant i don't have a manager i don't have any you need to you I've, need to get help i know i need to invest in infrastructure but um i just hired an assistant and everybody thought like you know i was getting a lot of dms of like girls that like or just got out of college and want to intern i hired a very short gay mexican man that was smart and he is the best. He is a fucking. He just went the he's full an diverse, animal. Diversity he has experience. He's expensive, but he's an ex assistant for a president of a major film studio, oh, shit. like huge film studio. And then he worked for Olivia Munn. And I gave him a higher rate to come work for us because he will fucking put my ass in check. But I moved like a good amount of money into crypto, and <laughs> then and then it dropped. <laughs> And this guy comes in and I'm doing a fucking live stream on trying to teach my like people how to do their own mullet in case their barbershop's closed. And he comes in and he's about to read off my bank info because he's changing the password and, and not allowing me to have access to my own money. Good. And Good. this is like, this is what I need. You and know, this is I your can't, assistant. That's the same guy. You're I, he's my executive assistant. He gets on the phone with people and he will fucking say, he says that I'm a, his executive assistant. I'm like, God damn. And he's talking to my fucking build. My, my, yeah, they're just like, we don't him. care what your position is. <laughs> yeah. to be honest, what, you need to change need the light bulb? <laughs> <laughs> we just need Jeff to make sure he cleans his shit up after his dog. But yeah, like looking for like your team, I, I think you need to really put a lot of 
a lot of thought into that and find the right people and help you out because you cannot be responsible for all these things. You'll drive yourself insane. I think that's kind of where I've been. I've just been, I found myself over the past, you know, three weeks to a month and even, and even more so back to the beginning of, uh, of 2021, just kind of overwhelmed thinking, just feeling kind of like I'm working on a lot of stuff by myself. You know what I'm saying? And, and even though for the majority of the year, you know, I was still with, with LP prior to him leaving to Puerto Rico, he's in his own world. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm sure, sh- I'm sure you remember what it was like working alongside David. You I know mean, what I'm bro, like, we have so much, best. we have so much in common. We have the two top dogs yeah. that we're friends with. Yeah. And unless you are, are playing Adam Sandler in a movie that's a young Adam Sandler and then you blow up and become a fucking A-list actor. I mean, it's going to be hard to get out of that. Both of us have very, very uh, diehard audiences. You know what I'm saying? I've got an audience of people that have read m- many of them, at least, you know, 20% of them have read my book and know my life story. And every I mean, day you're, I- you're probably one of the top five content creators right now if you go off engagement and views wise the other day yeah i mean that's a lot of eyes like two million views three four five million views that's think about stadium wise that's fucking a super bowl stadium times more than that i mean 50 like 50 of them like lined up watching you every every week and then on top of that you got to do logan's you know the the impulsive you got to do the impulsive podcast twitch streams promote the book how what's the give back look like you say so many things off the cuff with no plans, <laughs> yeah. and people expect you to get everything right. I'm coming straight out the gate. I'm an idiot. I got brain damage. My fucking head looks like mashed potatoes inside of it right now. I always wanted to take that angle. I think that's the angle. That no, that's I, the I, real I, angle. Yeah, but yeah, but I think it's the angle that Rogan takes very much so, and he's always told people since day one, like, yo, don't trust me. I'm a fucking idiot, but mm-hmm. like- you're not an idiot. Rogan's not a fucking idiot. That's that's his defense mechanism. I take some notes off of him. I, I take some notes from you guys too. Yeah, I just- I, I know just, not to have my relationships public. That was a learning lesson for me. And I think it will be the last time that that, that, that ever happens. It just adds another element to the relationship that is not uh, natural. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's It's- you go through these relationships in life where two people who each have their own set of goals, their own set of aspirations, their own set of values- um, and when one person crosses a certain boundary, there's a discussion that exists there and you, and you compromise and you find mm-hmm. a way to get past certain, certain issues. But when you add in, uh, 5 million, 8 million, 10 million opinions. other opinions to that, um, to that situation. And, and some of them are seven year olds. Some of them are seven year olds. Some of them are, um, porn addicts. Some of them are, uh, sc- scumbag stalkers Mm -hmm. some of them are really good people who have genuine concerns and or genuine feedback yeah it invites just a host of issues and you've you've watched so many creators go through the same kind of growing pains that i've gone through over the past six months right Mm -hmm. you saw it with um with even with like banks and Alyssa, you saw it with uh jake and girlfriends of the past you saw it with logan and girlfriends of the past you saw it with anybody who's ever tried to have an on-screen relationship on YouTube. And um, it, it, it's, it's an extremely, extremely challenging thing. And you have to, you have to sit back and wonder sometimes was that dynamic and that added element a contributor to the, to the death of a relationship. Another thing yeah. I can relate to you like a hundred percent on, I had a public relationship. Uh, I was dating uh, Sierra, my ex. Yep. That's my last ex. I haven't been in a relationship or even like tried to be in one since, but I owe a lot of everything. I owe a lot of my success and just my maturity to her, even though she was four years younger than me. This girl was a professional. She fucking was this little Mexican girl that fucking came over here and crushed it. Everybody told her no, and she did it the traditional way, like audition, book shit, got on shows, went to work at 5 a.m. every day and fucking never complained about it at all. Yeah. And I was just a straight up drug dealer. I was mailing a fucking co- a couple boxes of weed to the barbershop in New York a day and that was oh, it. My even, work. At the, even at the time? When at you were the dating, time, yeah. I was, and then I, I, I slowly faded out of it because I realized you know, I was jeopardizing a lot and I wanted to clean up my act and I never wanted to put her in a, a position. And I learned a lot from her and I kind of transitioned into social media around that time. I don't really talk about that, but I mean, fuck it, whatever. Isn't it fucked up that you do it legally now? It's And I went to jail for it seven (laughs) times. Yo, it's actually fucked up, man. That's a huge, uh, there's a discussion in that in itself. I mean, there's a lot of people who are still locked up for marijuana related um, criminal activities. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's it's actually fucked up. There's a lot of people in a lot of states that don't get a lot of attention. Um, I know there's been a lot of conversation around people of color being an outside 
um, portion of that group that continue mm-hmm. to remain in prison on on marijuana or um, drugs that have since been taken off schedule one and schedule two narcotics lists. And it's actually fucked up. It really is. Some of those people are in jail for life. For, I know for I face life offenses. for mostly marijuana. My own friends, have my, my good friends, my partners have been arrested and faced life and it's ridiculous i want to do everything i can you know i feel like we're all put in this world to you know do something you know it's either mm-hmm. you know we're all gonna fucking die unless you get the neural link and then you end up in a fucking laptop <laughs> but uh like you black me that episode <laughs> of black me <Mirror. laughs> yeah but i feel like you know i i was arrested for this so many times i sat in jail some of the darkest moments of my life for weed and now it's legal i've applied for my license um i am i'm, I'm partnering with my friends who are licensed now and we're going to do it the right way. And we're, I mean, if we can help get wrongfully convicted, like wrong, I mean, anybody that's in jail for weed, I will raise <laughs> hell if I have to. It, I will use any resource I have. I got you. I used to do videos back when my friend Cody, who I picked up from jail, he had a phone. He, he would get all fucking contraband. He would get time added on all the time because he would get caught with a the phone. They'd add on three months every time he got caught yeah. with a phone. He got caught with the phone three times. He had to do almost an extra year oh my God. for having this phone. But he would do live streams from prison. Rappers would join, like Pusha T would join because nobody's <laughs> doing that. You know, right, like right. this motherfucker is so wild. He, he's broadcasting that he's making fucking alcohol in the toilet. And he's What's like- What's it called? Is it called Pruno? Pruno, Pruno, Pruno yeah. But they call, it depends where what right. state you're in. But yeah, I've been, I've been like, locked up in all states and i mean yeah bro i i would love to fucking help out my boys that are that are sitting in there i've also had you know bunkies that were murderers and just straight up like are in there for a shot either. people in the head and yeah. young kids 19 20 years old because when i get arrested i was younger so i would get put with the youth offenders but they were there were murderers especially here in la and i had this bunkie that we were talking and it's like a normal guy talking like you and me and then I finally, you know, I'm like, what are you in for? After like days of being a bunkie with him, he's like, oh, I shot somebody and hit him in the head and he died. The way you just explained it, he made it sound like he he like bank shot it off something. Like he's like, I shot at somebody and it hit him in the head. Yeah. Like it was, it was he aiming there? But, or was <laughs> bro, yeah, so you murdered somebody. Yeah, like that's what I'm he saying. Like the way he explained yeah. it, you like gave you the roundabout stuff. Yeah, but like would have never known, a- like was completely nice to me and, and you know, looked out for me. And, and this is in... A, California jail where you know the second you walk in it's like are you with the woods are you with the Mexicans are you with the blacks or the others and I mean that's a whole nother story I think next episode I'm going to do like a patreon only where I get into more crime stuff because this one will be public and we have so much stuff to talk about. I'd love right. to join you for the crime episode. Because <laughs> I, I can, bring, than, I can, I can do definitely it now. bring the drug down. In. No, no, let's do it another time. I'm, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm here to, to support. I um I'll have, have I'll hop out of frame for the crime one. I don't the, crime one. <laughs> the attorney leaves. He's our, like, ener- our energy has shifted so much. I remember when we did that episode of um Barbershop. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. You know, not not to expose anything from Barbershop, but mm-hmm. I think you probably feel comfortable talking about it a little bit. Uh, it's yeah, a, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a semi scripted show. Yeah, of course. Right? I, I I script my stuff. Right. Uh, my jokes are scripted. Right. The unscripted is how you're going to react to them and how I'm going to react to your reaction. Correct. And I remember when we did the show. There was there was a number of jokes that were made, and I was completely fine with all of them. Mm-hmm. But there was one where signs were held up that said, um, "How do you feel about your girlfriend being railed on camera?" Very disrespectful. I thought we were too close of friends at uh, an early time, and I and when, when I become friends with somebody, that's when I make the word. If if I I make fun of this guy bad, <laughs> right, 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 like right, I right. fucking it's borderline bullying. I don't know why he even showed up today, and that just means I'm so comfortable with him. He's one of my favorite friends. <laughs> And if I could do that with you, that means I really like you. But so. but I but the, obviously there was a, the dynamic of a third party involved, right? I, that I you're understand. not, you weren't really mm-hmm. your friends with. And and so and by the way, that's not why I'm bringing it up. The reason I'm bringing it up is because, um, the the feedback on that episode that ended up being everyone's favorite part of the show. And when we did the episode, I people like to see I, people I, be tortured, right? But but more so than that, it was the reaction, right? Mm-hmm. So many people thought, and probably still do, as they watch this episode, that my reaction that day was mm-hmm. real, yeah, and that I was genuinely <laughs> mad at you about those signs, yeah. But obviously, when I walked into that episode. My intent was to act alongside you as much as possible to elevate the episode to a point of of insanity, and which you it did. It. We, cr- it, it, we crushed one it. of the best episodes. Right. I ask people all the time when they come up to me on the street, and and they're like, "Yo, I just binge watched the whole series," and I'm like, "What was your favorite episode?" 
Nine out of 10 times they say that one. When I was filming those, man, I was going through a really dark time. Like I was fucking- I know. You know, you could see in the episode, my eye is sunken in <laughs> right, my right, fucking right, brain. Right, like it's so right. much different than what it is now. I right. made a lot of progress, but I mean, just to fucking put on a smile and record through those moments is tough. And you've been going through hell and you've been pushing through it all. So props to you, Trump, bro. I mean, you can Trump, hit a sound bite now, guys. See, it's all about comedic timing. There we go. Mike's doing great. Just to be clear, Jeff. I'm proud of you, bro. It's a tough profession. Just to be clear, Jeff, when you said, when you people on the street, they say nine out of 10 times, do they say the episode with Mike and you're just assuming it was this Mike and yeah, they really meant this Mike? Cut, cut, cut this was my favorite cut episode of the barbershop. Cut, cut Mike's mic. I already paid Oscar off. He's not cutting my mic. Did, no, it's cut. I'll it's take cut. this mic. <laughs> no, no, you're not. <laughs> no. You're not touching him. He's the main guest of the show. Yeah. Nice. Now you guys are getting the hang of it. You guys were saying like the relationships being public and the amount of views you guys get. Like when Jimmy Fallon walks off the tonight show after getting five million views on the tonight show he's not going on twitter seeing people talking about his wife his kids he's doing a similar thing he's creating content he's creating comedy but his personal life is private i think that the internet culture like what you guys are doing is a new path and there's invariably going to be pain and growth that's like the nature of the universe is there's always pain and growth and forging new ground you have to you have to push through some thorns and, and some some pain Everything in order that comes out of your mouth is fucking stupid He's such an asshole. <laughs> that bathroom group. No, no, but wine. Let's uh, let's make Jeff FM the whining podcast. It's Hold not on. whining. I'm, no, no, I'm, no, I'm no, trying no, to, no, trying no, to no, give YouTuber. a little perspective. My life to... sucks. And so people make fun of me in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying look, to provide guys, a little bit of perspective. Look. No, hold on. Let me let me touch on what he said really quick. As content creators on the on the internet, walk a, a a very thin line between content and real life. Whatever you see on YouTube, whatever you read on Twitter, whatever is delivered to you via drama pages or even out of our mouths, is generally speaking a small percentage of the actuality of the situation we're just walking a very risky road mm -hmm. a, a, a very risky tight road what mike says here is off the cuff he's being himself jimmy fallon has writer's jokes that he's reading other people's stuff and he's also you know given a bit of his own personality there but it's not it's not where he's going to get himself into trouble you know there's 24 hours in a day and I if think you put out 10 minutes of content that's not your entire life that's correct. a percentage correct. of a percentage. yeah i think us riding that that line is what makes this job so exciting is how far can i take it where i keep things exciting and i keep it real and i keep it authentic to me my humor that i would want to make for my friends to laugh i want to help my fan base i love that i started a patreon i love that i have a discord i could pop in there if i need fucking therapy I, yeah i should probably see a professional but i'll talk to i'll talk to my fucking people in my discord chat and we go on the voice thing and there's people from india that that chime in and i made a uh i made a tier that i thought nobody would sign up for just because i wanted to make the tiers like funny like i made it like um oscar if you want to pull it up and show like scroll down it I have uh, tiers that's mafia related, like like uh, rankings in the mafia. I love so, how you play all the way into shit. Like I mean, you, it's, you lean into it, and it's so smart. It's so let's smart. Have fun with I, it, I, you know, I, I spent so much time arguing um, the Jake Paul clout chaser thing, where he was like, "He's a selfish clout." Do you yeah. remember all that? Yeah, and, yeah, and of course. The internet would always lean on that whenever I would, <laughs> I would make like a mistake. And I, I at the, the end of the day, we're all cloud chasers. It's a business. Obviously, if you're not here using whatever marketing materials, I'm not you have, paying Mike to no, be here. Of course not. This guy's a goddamn cloud chaser. Look at right, his fucking right, rat right, right, face. Right. I'm gonna no. lose followers by being on this show. <laughs> Let's be honest, okay? <laughs> so we made the look. You got the hitmen. If you could zoom in a little, Oscar, you got the hitmen. That's the five dollar tier. That's where you get pretty much the the you know the early episodes, the bonus episodes. Paulie you got that's, that's Polly Walnuts standing next to you Christopher. See, Who's Pauline Walnuts and Christopher out there. You see them; they're freezing out in the in the cold. And when they chase, when they had to chase that guy, they chase that the, guy down. They're the out there snow. in the cold, but they're part of the crew. They're doing their work. They're soldiers. They're that here. They're called, in uh, it. Well, they're, that was actually the most the favorite episode of The Sopranos. I believe it's called Snowfall. I, I'm I'm really big on that show, and I think that was kind of like the fan favorite episode. I'm so happy that I have people that have watched a series of Sopranos because I guarantee all three of us know every episode. I've seen every yeah. single I guarantee episode. all three of these bananas in that room have over there have no idea what we're talking they know about. about. But they know what Lil Uzi Vert's newest song is called. Exactly. And it's and that's fine. So you got the hitmen outside. They're shivering in the cold. They just put in some work. They just killed the guy. They just whacked somebody. But they're, you know, they're part of the crew. They're trying to work their way up. And then you got General. General, you see Paulie's getting a haircut now. He's now made it. He's... 
He's all access. Yo, you if you're him. out there and you're watching or listening to this episode of uh, Jeff FM, go ahead and subscribe to Jeff's Patreon. Okay. I've ac- I've actually heard very, very good things about what goes on. I mean, this will, this. this will probably be a Patreon. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So go ahead. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you got it. You see, he's getting his hair cut and now he's being treated better. He gets a little more access. And then you go to Made Man. You got a boss. You got Tony Soprano in the pool with his gun and the cigar. You get the thirst traps. You get the fucking... You get... I'll, you put he, thirst traps as one of the things. <laughs> yeah, you, you get the live streams. You get the bonus vlogs. You get fucking 20% off the merch drops, the exclusive merch drops. See this shit? I made this tier kind of as a joke because I wanted to have it mob related. And you know the Godfather is the all-time boss. I'm going to make him an offer he can with you. I, I didn't think anybody was going to buy this. About 10 people bought it right away. And we had to kind of put a halt on it. I was like, fuck now, because I, I, I give a personal one-on-one phone call with advice. And I want this to be like a concierge, you know, like my fucking, like you, you talk to your concierge, like, look, m- my fucking best friend messed around with my girlfriend. I need to know what to do. Uh, Jeff, like, I know you've been through shit. I know you've been through a lot of life experience. I need help here. I can't talk to my asshole friends in Maryland because they don't have this type of life experience. So that's what I made this tier for. $100 a phone call. There's no limit to the phone call. So basically, like, this is going to get out of hand eventually. Yeah, that's that's ridiculous, man. They could just hit you up whenever they want. Well, or- I want to be able to help people. And I, I got into a lot of deep conversations. And I, I even spoke to a girl who was trans. And she didn't tell me until, like, 20 minutes into the phone call. Mm-hmm. She asked me how I deal with people criticizing me and, like, hating on me and, like, all the negative shit that you hear. And I just told her, like, you know, I know that we, our stories are completely different, but I could relate to you because as you get older, you stop giving a fuck what people think. And back when I was in high school, I, w- I wouldn't want to fucking read when the thing came to me. I wouldn't want to go in front of the class and present a project just because I would like fucking, I hated talking, I hated doing anything. And I thought so much about what people thought. Yeah, yeah. And now where I'm at, I'll go on stage in front of a thousand people and fucking do stand up and have the time of my life. Like, it's just your life changes your your state of mind changes as you get older and right now she's like 18 and i'm like yo you you got fucking like you're only 10 20 percent of your life you just in. got started yeah yeah you got yeah. so much to learn and that first 10 percent of your life you're a fucking your brain's mush so you haven't even figured out who you are yet you got plenty of time to figure it out and i love doing those calls but we got to change the fucking thing we got to cut it off i want to cut off the godfather tier whoever gets in the club now they're in it and i want i want them to be made men and we we can't just keep making people if you're that's not how it works. watching and listening to this episode of jeff fm the uh, godfather tier on his patreon will only be open for another 36 hours after this episode airs go ahead it's uh patreon.com Look up Jeff Wittick and join the Godfather tier. I uh, appreciate also that. alongside, if you sign up for Jeff's Godfather tier, uh, the first five people to sign up will also be getting a phone call with me. I'm, I'm going to be stuck in the house for the next six weeks doing these phone calls. You know that, right? Um, let me know who I owe phone calls. To. <laughs> I'm dead serious. It's honestly, home. it means a lot. It's so much more fulfilling. And I know I sound like a fucking liar here, but... It's so fulfilling to talk to these people and actually genuinely one on one help people. Like that's that's as you get to a point in life when like, you know, you've gone through the stages of like, you know, you wanted to fucking just hook up with as many chicks as possible and it's like how many numbers can I get on my belt? Yeah. And then you go through another phase where you smack your head off a crane and then you're like, you know what? There's a reason why I'm here. And I wanna use my powers or whatever. If I wanna call my fucking my fuck ups powers like i flipped that shit into positives and now i'm gonna they use are. that to fucking help these people who need it going through so much and now being able to do so much cool shit and being blessed and have the opportunity to do the kind of shit that i get to do it's not the a5 that gets my dick hard it's not the fucking jet it's not any of that cool shit that i've been fucking blessed to be able to do it's helping somebody out it's getting a fucking message from somebody that says yo like I read your book and I got 32 days clean now because it inspired me to stop using. It's fucking, you know, homie, homie in mass hitting me up and being like, yo, like my mom fucking OD'd when I was seven and I never understood why she couldn't just stop fucking using. Mm-hmm. And I read your book and I, and now I understand what, what that life is like. Yeah, and, I couldn't and it comprehend. Gave me, and it gave me peace. Back then, I could never see myself being vulnerable on the internet. I was right. a fucking clown. I would say dumbest shit possible. 
just to get a laugh from my right. friends, you know, and I never thought I'd be here doing this shit, but I, n- I never even thought I would be able to work up the car. First of all, I couldn't understand addiction when I was younger, and then I realized I, I'm eating fucking three packs of sunflower seeds in an hour, <laughs> and I'm like, something's wrong, and then as I get older, it's like I'm drinking too much, and then right. I get to a point where I'm like, I'm 28, and I'm just not happy with my life, and I'm drinking every night to sleep. I went to a doctor, and I was like, yo, doc, I think I'm a fucking alcoholic, and he's like, are you drinking during the day? And I'm like, no. And I'm like, how much you how do you how often do you drink and i'm like well i'll drink like a bottle of wine to go to sleep like every night and he's like yeah that's no good <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> help you sleep too much that literally makes you the opposite like you don't get sleep because your body is processing this poison that you put in and i have sleep apnea i got like legitimately diagnosed with it oh, so really? he oh, gave yeah. me ambien and th- and then that ambien i started taking i haven't had a drink since and it's been three years and i, I like i owe it to going and speaking up and just getting help. Are you still taking the Ambien? I mean, yeah, I fucking take the Ambien. I'll fucking smoke a cigarette if I feel like it, but I'm not addicted to Do anything, you ever, like, you know? um, accidentally... I'll like, smoke a cigarette for, like, a cool photo or something, you know, like, to look, like, badass, but I'm not going to cool. be jeweling like Steven, you know, like a same, fucking I goddamn... I do it just because so, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, cigarette. It's not cool. Vaping kills. Yeah, vaping is the Which worst is. you could do because you could do it whenever. You could like you don't have to go outside and light it and have fire That's involved. What I, would just say, bro. <laughs> I was just telling Stephen <laughs> that because he's gonna get out. You have access to it whenever you want. Yeah, exactly. Right but not anymore because if I find that I'm gonna smash it. Aren't we supposed to be telling kids not to do that? I don't even know. Like, is Stephen it- has a collapse. Uh, I'm gonna voice my my opinion. This is how I live my life. If you're smoking a vape around me, I'm not gonna fucking hang out with you. If you're a girl. And you smoke jewels, done, deal breaker, done, I'm out. It's kind of gross, bro, isn't it? Isn't it I might have just lost about fucking 200,000 subscribers because the jewels are popular. Yeah, they're popping but, right now. But you no, know, if, if I see a girl sucking on that USB cord and like even if she's sneaking it, ugh, gross, gross. And yeah. I'm not saying cigarettes are better, but they look cooler. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't get all the facts over here. You get my opinion. That's all you need to know. <laughs> I don't even need the sound bites. You guys can do a little sound bite sound. Have you, you might have cool you ever off. Been We're addicted good. to nicotine? Have I ever been addicted to nicotine? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Like actually addicted. Steven yeah. Needs, like an everyday thing. And and Steven like needs guidance right, right now, is basically what he's asking for. He's addicted. No, like an everyday thing though. You need to do a fucking couple weeks in a cell to where you have nothing and then you realize what fucking addiction is. Mike's been through dope sweats. You know what dope sweats are? You're fucking freezing cold, but your body is soaking wet and you you're shivering. You have the flu, you're shit and puking all over yourself. You talk like see, cryotherapy? You're, see, you're seeing things. No, not cryotherapy. What no, the fuck it's, is going on with this? They're, they're a bunch of little kids. They know nothing. And I don't, they shouldn't have a voice. We should cut their mics. Because ha, you, bro, you, you're if, all canceled. It's like, it's, like having, it's like having the flu times 50, bro. And you're, you're curled up in a ball, fucking sweating, spitting all over yourself, wait, shitting wait. your pants. This is withdrawal? Withdrawing from heroin. Withdrawal. So you want to- I'm not addicted to heroin. It's, you know, it, you're doing it, basically. You, you by smoking that jewel, is basically you're doing heroin. That's what it that's gonna to. Lead, it's going to lead to it. Jewels are the gateway drug What heroin. What made you think it's Stop, okay? Really? What made you think yes. it's okay to smoke a jewel, Steven? Because you saw your friends wait, doing it? it actually does? Do you want to know? Yo, do you want to know? Wait, it's, it's Steven, right? Yeah. Let me tell you a story, Steven. When I was younger- Back in the 60s. Do you want the sad music? No. Try it. I tried it. It's Go fun. ahead, give it to me. All right, All right. It, was, it was the fucking 90s. Lower it a little bit, Lord. I went to 7-Eleven after school one day. Okay. I used to love Coca-Cola Slurpees. They were my favorite. Everybody made fun of mm, me. They, they put a little like, cherry in there, yeah. too. You mm. got to mix a little cherry in there. Oh Everybody made fun of me because they were like, why would you drink the Coca-Cola ones? It's fucking disgusting. Went up to the counter, paid for my Slurpee, and the guy said to me, my friend, these jewels are on sale today, two for five. Now, I didn't want a jewel, man. I just wanted the Slurpee. I wanted to get home. I wanted to work on my math homework. My mom said if I got my math homework done that I could play Mario Kart. Okay. You know, I'm gonna fucking on Postmates a Slurpee right now. Give me one. I'll be honest with you. He said if you do the two for five deal on the on the jewels, I'll give you the Slurpee for free. I'll throw it in. It was a, it was before uh, before marketing around nicotine was outlawed, banned in 52 states. <laughs> So I took the, the jewel. I went home. I tried the thing for the first time. I sat on the chair. I tried the jewel. I inhaled deeply. I felt that wicked, wretched smoke. You got a little lightheaded. Wait, wait, wait. wait was, my- it, was it like a direct hit or was it like a mouth to throat? No, it was amazing. Like, yeah, I basically he, it was deep throat in the fucking thing. I he had composited it. My, my compositor, he shoved it up yeah, his I, ass. I, I wrecked. I took a rectal hit. <laughs> so I tried that 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 sick, sad medicine, and it for a second it made me feel better. 
yeah. and then you're chasing the dragon, it baby. Feels, no, no, it feels amazing. You let me never explain. get that let me, feeling let me finish, again. Let me finish this one story. You got to hear this, Stephen. About can you re, can you can start you, the music again? Can please? you reboot it? About three days after that, I was uh, with my friends in Stratford, Connecticut. Is that where you're from? And I asked my I'm from Milford, and I asked my friends. Stephen, you hey, need to respect your elders. I okay. I, I asked do. My, Sorry. I asked my friend, hey man, um, my, my vape ran out. Do you think that you might be able to lend me a cartridge? <sighs> oh man, borrowing it now. You're asking for it. Should, so uh... he reached out and I reached out. And it wasn't a vape cartridge. It was a heroin needle filled with 30 cc's of heroin. You mistake a cartridge for a needle. And, and, wait, and I was so hot. No, listen to me, Stephen. Uh, what is 30 Stephen, CC? listen to me. It doesn't fucking matter. I'm sorry. I was so high off of vape. Hell yeah. I, I was so high off vape <laughs> that I couldn't tell the difference between the vape and the heroin needle. And actually that was the first time that I used heroin and it led to a 10 year addiction. All because the guy at 7-Eleven convinced me to get a free, free Slurpee and to try vape for the first time. So if you're at home right now or if you're in the bathroom monitoring an episode of Jeff F FM and you think that vape is cool or it's okay, it's not. It's not. It's not. No, 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 it's no, actually, no, no. It, it it's actually not. isn't. It's really not. And it's I'm not looking cool. for a wife right now and a mother for my child. And if you're smoking vapes, I will not repopulate with you. But but just understand, man, it's the gate. They used to say weed's the gateway drug. Every meth head, every fucking food addict person that can't put the cheeseburger down, it all started from one place, man. Wait, but like, did you know that it was vapes. heroin when he, I'm, it was a needle? Yes, but I was I was under the influence. Bro, he of did H, bro. Didn't you hear the dope sweat story? What do you think? He got that from quitting jewels? You don't Steve, know what it's Steven, like. I you was, think it's hard to quit a jewel? Try to quit heroin. It's not even about the quit. Steven, I was under the influence of vape. It can do numbers on your psyche. I don't even mental. know what's in it. It's Wait, literally Mike, liquid. Yes. Instead of like scaring the guy, how, how can you help him? We're scaring We're, we're helping know. him with I, fear. I thought fear is a good... Uh, isn't that why pe why jail exists? You like, gotta, oh, I'm you not gotta help yourself. Uh, yeah, I mean, bro, my dad. I, when my when I fucking grew up, my dad would beat the shit out of me, and he had he admitted it in the documentary. Uh, it's 2021, and people like frown upon uh, like abusing your children. And I'm not saying that I'm gonna go and hit my my kids or I hit Nerf. I don't put my hands on Nerf, you know. Sometimes I might raise my voice at him if he pees on the look carpet. At, look at him, look at him hitting that thing. Can you do that and, one more time, bro? You do that right Dude, in my face, no, so disrespectful. It, no, as I tell, it. I tell you, I'm telling you how I, even I was it. raised, and I support, I support hitting. You're doing I, meth right next. You know to what? Me, I don't. Steven. Let me. I don't support the child abuse. But I got struck when I was a child, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't change the way I was raised, bro. Back when I was a fucking, I'm not, I sound like I grew up in the '60s, but the, even in the in the fucking <laughs> '90s, my fucking baseball coach would fucking smack me in the face if I fucking smelled it off. My nun, I went to what? Catholic school. What? They fucking hit you with the ruler. My teachers, my fucking nun in Catholic school. I'm like, yo, chill. I'm, I'm good with this. I'm fucking like, I, God. I believe in you, but I'm I'm not having no nun yeah. whack me with a uh, with a ruler anymore. Well, that's how we grew up, Stephen, and we're not over here smoking on a USB stick. I just want you to be be wary and mindful of where that path can take you, dude. Bro, you want to end up like Bubble Boy in the shower? Bro, over I know there? I have an addictive personality. I'm just okay. Let me let me let me say this really quick. Gilbert syndrome. Cue the, when I first moved to LA, <clears throat> I met this kid named Timmy. How long is this one gonna be? Just thirty seconds. <laughs> Ah. Me and Timmy started making content together. First few episodes of the night shift had him in it. One day we went to get some Slurpees at 7-Eleven. He ran in. I, st I stayed out. <laughs> you already told the story, dude. Oh, no, it's, <laughs> a it's a different one. I think you're addicted just to forget, Slurpees. No, just, I think that's what the problem is. It. I just, think you got just, a damn Slurpee addiction. I know they're good. No, but Steve, I fucking, here's what, here's, no, I'll finish. Here's what was good. This guy needs this to go to SAA, Slurpee Addicts Anonymous. So so what happened was this. He ran inside. I stayed in the car. I did. I was talking to my mom about something private, private matter. He went inside. I thought he came back with just two Slurpees, but little did I know he had also come back with a vape pen. For the next few days, I would see him and he was, you know, vaping. He would sit outside in this plume of smoke, you know, next to the bushes. I walked outside. There you, he was. You jumped too far ahead of the story. I'm lost now. Now you're in a restaurant. I thought you were outside. If you're in a car and he was out by a bush. You see, okay, can I tell you what just happened there? Yeah. You you uh, just od on vape. You, <laughs> you know, just od Brother, that's not where I was on the story. You we fried were at a your brain, club. bro. You fried your fucking brain. You need vape. 68 Dr. Amon pills a day. You got you to gotta go do fucking molecular therapy with Jeff. Have a water. You're fucking hot. Here, Here, heat it up. Here. I, I, for you. Oh. But are you getting the guest mats? Here. Long, long story short, I walked outside and, and there was Timmy behind the building. 
on his knees, surrounded by vape cartridges, sucking the dick of one of the LA Clippers. Mm-hmm. It it I think it acts as a, as its own infomercial as to why kids shouldn't vape. Do you, the do Clippers you are like a is that like a ba- baseball guy? The, guy that was, the Clippers, the baseball is team basketball? is that what you're asking? I'm not in the sports. How's the mullet like look on on cam? I just want to make sure I remove my hat. I don't want to look like a goddamn fool for the rest of it. So Steven's a meth head. Is that what you're saying? Well, he just has the he has the ability to become one if he keeps it up. Just just be wary, Steven. I'm not an enabler. I don't support it. I don't support. I don't support. It. <laughs> I do not support it. I, look, I keep no alcohol in my house. I keep no cigarettes around, no jewels. No, there will be no USB outlet, even plugs in here. I'm throwing them all out. It's not allowed. Do you have a Citizen app? Uh, yeah, I mean, first, do you want to even mention, like, you and Logan are cool, right? Me like, and Logan are fan fucking fantastic. Because me and people ask me about me and David all the time, and I'm like, yeah, I was at his house the other day. We talked, you know, like we're we're good, you know. Talking or, to the talk to the kid every day. He's got a fight. When's this episode coming up? Uh, it'll probably be out like two days. He's got a fight coming up June sixth. Can you get me tickets? Yes. Can yeah. we? Can I want to be on screen? Do you want to hang out with me for a while? I want to be there with you next yes, to you. Yes. I want. I don't. I don't need any get other people to come. I know you're looking at me over there, and you're you want me to ask if I can get an extra seat, I but I can't. I don't think he, yeah. No, it's my birthday weekend. I was gonna see if you guys want to come to my birthday party, but I'm busy. Okay. June six, Floyd Mayweather, uh, Miami, Florida, the the event of the year. Uh, who knows what will happen? It's 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 going to be a wild f- showdown to the death. It looks like we will be doing, and this is this is semi. I mean, if Logan goes the distance, it's a win in my book. If he fucking makes it twelve rounds, I will be fucking ecstatic for him. You know, this is exclusive content right now. I'm going to share something. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, there will be an impulsive episode being filmed prior to and after the fight down there in Miami. So we will have impulsive uh, coming back for the fight. And you'll be on it? Absolutely. Can I leave that in? Absolutely. Hell yeah, bro. But I also, but also Hell like, yeah. yeah. I don't know why I would even say it myself. He does it so much better. It's just, I got to oh, press I, these I, buttons I, so I, fucking I, hard I, now for them to work because you guys are limited to me. I'm being censored by my own team. You want to talk about COVID-19? Are you vaxxed? I'm not vaxxed. I have antibodies. I had it semi-recently, which which was. So you got a little time. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's, what's your plan on the vaxxing? Vax, you know? bro. Vaxed. You're, all, you're all vaxxed yeah, up. Yeah, I know I'm a cool guy and I'm fucking. China. I got no problem with it. Listen, I'm not a stranger to fucking needles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> I mean like, That's you know, a dark my mom. Piece. My mom I'll would do always the say, sound bites if you guys are going to be asleep at the wheel back there. My mom would always say to me, I would, you know, over the past 10 years, she's got a similar humor to me and you. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's where we get it from, right? I'm sure your parents uh, yeah. are the same way. I would, my dad whipped I, me with I, a belt. I'd hit her up and I'd be like, Mom, I got a, you know, when I first was getting clean and shit, Mom, I got a headache. Can you bring me the Tylenol? And she would bring me the Tylenol, and I would look on the bottle, and I'd say, "Mom, this this expired seven months ago. I can't take this." And she'd be like, "You just got done smoking crack <laughs> for a decade, and you're telling me that the Tylenol's expired? Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about?" So, like, listen, like, as far as the vax is concerned, are you Italian? Yeah, I got a little bit of Italian. I got Italian in me, in me where it counts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm sure you could, so you could hear it in my <laughs> oh, yeah. place, right? But like, yeah, all these people out there, they're like, the newscasters be like, we caught up with Susie in the Chick-fil-A line, pounding f- fucking French fries into her mouth. She weighs 297 pounds and she is worried sick over getting the vaccine. Susie, what do you have to say? No, I ain't gonna get that vaccine. <laughs> I think that vaccine make me die sooner than I was gonna. Susie, uh, this news just in, you're actually going to die tomorrow <laughs> anyways because you weigh 400 pounds and you won't stop eating Chick-fil-A for breakfast. Yeah, I Do just, you know what I'm saying? I, I like, what like, the fuck is going on in this I country? Like, Everybody's unhealthy and fucked up, doing drugs, eating fucking french fries, fucking each other raw doggy. And and like for what to then say no I don't want to get a vaccine I don't want to fucking get I'm scared yeah, medical look, advice off on I'm, Facebook I'm, comment I'm, yeah I'm you know, biased I'm I, I had I had COVID back in December and I was like fuck it I'm not gonna get this shit I don't care but uh, you know I looked at it like you know I have some friends that hit me up and tell me that the Earth is flat and stuff like that and it, it is the, lo- my actions will will speak words Do you believe that the Earth is flat Yeah I did a whole documentary about it Were you were you really serious with that or was no, it? I didn't no, watch it It was a parody not. You didn't watch that No Let me let me I watched this. Logan's Pokemon video How many, I can't watch these many nah, videos nah, nah, bro nah, 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 nah. Listen let me say this too the, I like to watch the, movies the struggle, and get inspired uh, from The Departed I want to find the rat Well hold on hold on this is what I want to ask you about This another struggle I'm having right now too is when I started doing YouTube videos like two, two, three years ago, 
I was like, oh, this is fucking great. Like ad revenue concepts. Like I could walk around a park with a G7X and like face it at myself and talk to my audience. Mm-hmm. I'm do- going to do this shit forever. There's just a, there's a shelf life on this shit, bro. Like they're not even because, dude, I want to do other shit. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I want, I really want to do other shit. And when we put out Flat Earth and I got to act and I got to sit there and cr- actually cry. No, I'm going to watch it tonight. Oh, oh listen, know it was like make, that. make no mistake. Logan Paul's Flat Earth documentary is one of the most underrated pieces of content on fucking YouTube. I'll watch it tonight. It is a beautiful, stunning I can't believe I didn't infiltration. do my research. Infiltration. Oh, he didn't read the article. Infiltra- I gotta, Jeff, I gotta. Do, do you understand what the premise of that episode was? Well, I wanted to get into saying how my friends who will call me up and say, don't get vaxxed. Oh, yeah. Also, the earth is flat. And also, right. invest in fucking nutsack coin. So, like, you know, I got some friends out there that I know to keep at bay. And I'm thinking about it like if this conspiracy was that the vaccine was to kill all of us, why would they want to kill the people that obey the government and do what the government says? Why would they want to have all the maniacs that fucking <laughs> want to raise hell and say everything's a conspiracy and the earth is flat be the only people left Makes on the no on the sense at all. Thank you, Lincoln. Thank See, you, Lincoln. Shout out that, Lincoln. If you're not following Shot and Awkward Guy on TikTok, go follow Shot and Awkward Guy on TikTok. So home here right See, that's timing. Well done, guys. I will not strike anyone today. That is a good point. That's a very good point. I never thought of it. I never thought of it like that. Like, why would you, why do they want the people that think that uh, reptiles rule the universe? You know what I'm saying? To be the only people left. Like the people that, the Are people. Are talking about dinosaurs? No, I mean, there's, I mean, the same people that believe that, you know, that there was a massive pizza um, uh, organization behind all of the child set. You know what I'm saying? Like pizza yeah. gate, right? And they believe those that people are made out of li- like the government or lizard people. Lizards. That, yeah. It's called reptilian overlords. Yeah. And yeah. so like, and the reason I know this stuff, I should be full transparency yeah. for you is, with you is because we had Alex Jones on the podcast. Oh, oh, wow. And so that was, that was one of the highlights of my, of my time so far in the city was being able to actually sit across from that yeah. guy. Holy Absolute shit. fucking maniac absolute fucking maniac who built his platform off some of the most ridiculous things ever and his audience was as crazy as he was right you think there's truth behind well, some hold of his on. madness being, being the being the connecticut boy that i am and being from 203 i take very 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 serious offense to one of his claims which was that sandy hook was not real oh yeah mm-hmm. fuck that and 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 as someone who who similarly to 9-11 can can piece that moment together in my mind seeing the news of those children is something that i will never forget having the opportunity to have him on the show knowing that he was saying that this was an inside job a false flag it was going to lead to gun control and it was put together by the government and i was furious i was fucking furious and Mm -hmm. i got on the phone earlier in the morning before he came on the show with uh someone who was representing an actual family that had lost a child at sandy hook and the representative said, if you punch Alex Jones in the face, we will give you $100,000 wow. in cash. And, you know, the person that I was at the time and probably still am to an extent, you know, willing to to make content on anything. I told him that. Yeah. I said, yo, listen, some a Sandy Hook parent, because I, I, you, you know, I wasn't take rude. You the offer. Well, I told him. I said, a Sandy Oh, you Hook took cousin. the offer and you told him you took it. I told him I took it. This. He stood up. He walked over to me right in front of me. And he goes, well, punch me in the fucking face then. Punch me in the fucking face right fucking now. Punch me in the fucking face. Wow. How did I miss this? It's a great. It's a big. I, th- I believe the episode may have been taken down. I think we got in a little bit of trouble for replatforming him because he got deplatformed. Holy shit. And, and so I didn't do it mm-hmm. for whatever reason, probably because I was trying to avoid a further felony assault charge to add to my other felonies or whatever. I mean, what's it, a right? couple more yeah, at this well, point, I, you know? You know, I'm on You're, the straight. You've there, grown. Right? You want to help people. Correct. Not hurt people. Correct. You already can't get a job at a but bank. I, but maybe I should have whatever. But instead of... <laughs> Instead of hitting him, I, it didn't happen. So he said, oh, let me just handle that for you. And just started smashing his head on the fucking impulsive desk. Wow. <laughs> How did this not make a clip? Bro, and then, we got, and then we got fucked up with him. I mean, he, he ran through 40 bottles of fucking vodka. I mean, it, like we ordered pizzas. It was a four hour podcast. Damn. And in that podcast, he got very deep into this idea that the country is actually led by reptilian overlords. He still is on this train. Yeah, reptilian overlords. But you want to hear some fucked up shit? I mean, I can get behind that. You want to hear some fucked up shit? We're listening. On that episode, he was certain that China was incubating a virus. He was positive. Positive. Like Alternative medicine. China is is He predicted it? He he. I don't remember exactly what the what the claim was. Was this before any mention of COVID? Here here, here coronavirus. Yes, way before. Way a year before. 
he's on about so many things. They're yeah. creating gay frogs. They're doing like I mean the shit this guy talks about is mind blowing. They're but, creating but gay frogs. Yeah, yeah it, the you water. gotta watch. You the gotta water is turning the frogs. The frogs gay. gay exactly. It's like one you, of his big claims. You gotta watch. He's What's the nut, benefit dude. of gay frogs? I don't, I, Has I, there ever been proof of animals being gay? Can dogs be gay? Yeah, I kind of think yeah, nerds gay. I, be, I believe so. I believe so. I believe there's dude, something. That's around. wild that you fucking sat down with that dude. We, we had hours. With, I mean, I mean, dude, in, that and that's brings me back to this thing like impulsive cannot end the guests that we're able to bring onto that show the experiences we're able to deliver to the audience as a result of that show are are unforgettable i mean i mean alex jones is one thing i mean um mike tyson i personally believe that we have the preeminent mike tyson interview that exists in the world mm -hmm. ever think understand what i'm saying to you right now and i know that's a weighty claim but mike tyson sat down without telling any of us, and, and shoved five grams of mushrooms into his mouth. <laughs> Mad man, I and love And proceeded him. to open up and get vulnerable about all of the things that happened in his life, a lot of stuff that he probably hasn't talked about in other settings. Yeah. And and by the end of the show, you know, he's, he's 10 sheets to the fucking wind on mushrooms, smoking a joint while petting a live pigeon. Yeah. Like, come on. There's a, you, you, there, you've seen him have interviews on fucking ESPN. They're not like that. And so, like, if you think that if someone's out there right now and they think that an argument between me and Logan because I was a dumbass, a fucking idiot, and said some dumb shit is going to get in the way of us continuing to create some of the most intriguing fucking conversation on YouTube, you're a moron. So hopefully we can get back to work once this fight's over and, and, and get back to well, it. Well, yeah, his head's got to be all in one place. That's if what you want right to be the best at something, if you, you, you have to be obsessed. You have to put all your energy into one thing, and especially where he's at right now. I cannot believe he even did that whole before training camp, that madness with the film and all the episodes, because I, I would have dropped everything and just went into complete training mode i mean it's insane the opportunity that he has it's a once in a lifetime thing it's wild all the boxing stuff is wild it's i crazy. respect you for you know just giving him his space and letting him focus on what he needs to do he's got a job to do he's got one shot to do it and you know it's a fight game baby we got a little deep today and uh let's take a caller lighten it up lighten the mood is it an actual caller yeah we do calls here oh hello how you doing good hi how are you what's your name Bree. Bree, how you do, how you doing today? I'm great, Mike. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for thanks for joining us here on Jeff FM. My question was, being that you guys have both struggled with addictions in the past, uh, if you're ever in a situation like Mike with your ankle and then Jeff with your injury, where you are advised to take medication as advised by the doctors, are you ever hesitant, even if that medication is for your well being? And what is that that journey like for both of you? That's a great question. Like, I just went through this recently and I've been on and off of pain meds for nine months. And those things are fucking fun to take if you're not in pain. But like, you know, I know that I have a cutoff and it's like you got three days of extreme pain and that time you're not even getting, you're not feeling good from the meds. It's literally just to stop the pain. And I know that I'm aware of it. When I got into it, I was like, look, I'm... Once these are done, I'm done. And yeah, it's tough. The whole thing was tough. I have sometimes there's like my friends will come over, they'll put white claws in my fridge and I'll think like, you know, if I'm <laughs> feeling shitty, I'll just go slam the white claws and my problems will go away. But I know from long enough that making that mistake, that it's just going to get me into more shit. And yeah, it was tough at times, but you got to know, you got to remember the important thing that the, the end goal and, you know, don't, don't get caught up in that stuff. Yeah, so Bree, for me, um, <clears throat> I take the situation a little bit diff uh, differently, a different approach. I um, mm -hmm. I don't give myself any opportunities in that space at all. And so um, right. I've had, I believe, two or three surgeries since I got clean in 2010. I actually had my abdomen reopened to have a hernia repaired. Um, right. The doctor said to me, this is probably, I would call this an eight out of 10 surgery in terms of pain. Uh, so we're going to give you, we're going to give you morphine and we're going to give you opiates on the way into op uh, the operation. And then you're going to have a pretty lengthy pain uh, regimen coming out of it. Um, I yeah. turned, I turned down all of those pills. So I, I actually went through the entire surgery. I went through the entire post surgical process, the entire recovery phase with absolutely no painkillers. Um, I've done that through bike accidents now, concussions, broken bones, all post, uh, getting clean i've not touched a painkiller i do not uh i don't i don't fuck around with that shit but it's the, right. but but the question you're asking is 
very valid because it's it's a it's a it's an it's an odd situation to be in when you're in recovery and everything that you know in your life is to be staying away from one thing but mm-hmm. but knowing that you might need to do it is there is there a reason you ask are you are you up against something or, or are you just curious or oh no i'm okay. not up against no, anything no, it's fine. but i i know you know my 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 mother she was an addict and her her substance of choice was alcohol and um i just like seeing that you know so up close and personal like being her child obviously it does things to the child but seeing seeing someone battle with addiction so close to you um I don't know if it's the same for alcohol versus pills. Yeah, or that's any another other thing. Uh, with me, it was alcohol, and Mike's was more pills, and and yeah. you know, so it's it's more uh, it's different how we handle. It's more food. applicable to me, but I mean, I mean, the thing is, at the end of the day, is I I <laughs> I personally take as much opportunity as possible to to go as far as I can within that pain journey before I go near uh, before I would even consider going near the substance. So maybe you have that conversation. If the, if the pain becomes intolerable, obviously at mm-hmm. the end of the day, we're humans and we're going to have to alleviate that pain. So I think it's just, I think it's just, it just becomes a more malleable process. Whereas opposed to the doctor assuming that your mom is going to be in pain enough to require those pills post-surgery or in mm-hmm. recovery, th- that should be something that your mom asks for. Hey, I'm in so much fucking pain right now. I need help. Right? Do you understand what I'm right. saying? Yeah, yeah. And, and for yeah. from my 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 part, it's you know the eye nerve is excruciating pain. <laughs> yeah. So I I mean yeah, I, had to. I I really I really like it. it was necessary for me, but I would have liked to avoid it. If I do anything like break a, like when I break my hand or something like a pinky, uh, I I don't need it. I'll do Advil. <laughs> but when you get to, uh, the eye cut open, it's, yeah, it's you know you yeah, want to you want to just recover for a few days for sure yeah but that's a great question does that help Bri? i mean yeah i mean it wasn't it wasn't like she she's like four years sober like Sometimes she's clean you, and everything, oh she's sober so. oh that's great because we yeah. got we got a we got a jewel we got a, a nicotine addict in here he's only he's only 20 years old and he's addicted and i just want to grab him and shake him and just tell him that you know like just stop why can't you get it but it doesn't work like that they gotta they gotta sometimes hit rock bottom and it's unfortunate that that's the yeah. way that you turn around but you know i, I try like, giving oscar advice about it but he just doesn't so we have to let steven in there can you flip can you cut to steven he's unfortunately gonna have to hit rock bottom and we'll show it here live on the show as we grow steven we'll show his progress thank you brie appreciate thank you for chiming. that was a great question you guys doing a good job finding brie <laughs> thank you brie yeah thank you Thanks. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Mike. Yeah. C- can I ask you something? Yeah. Do you feel like you're too hard on yourself sometimes? Yes. Really? Yes. Yeah, I do actually. I, I, I do I'm actually. like that. Do you want a LaCroix? Yeah, sorry. It was, it, are you asking me that question? Yeah. No, but, but, um, uh, it's Stevie, right? Mm-hmm. Stevie, Stevie, I actually do feel like no, that. Stevie, but and it and it. <laughs> call me Steve, not Steve. Don't. He just made your that version of your name such a little I bitch to, version. Steve, fucking Steve. You went from hey, hey Stevie. Hey, listen up here. Why? No, but yes, you're, you're an adult now. Go by Steve. But yes, I do feel like that, and it's something that I'm fucking working on. And um, I I think, I think this, you know, I I think everybody has to stop taking things so seriously, and 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 try to lighten up and loosen up and right. and and honestly something i've been trying to do lately and i hope this helps you and anybody else who hears it is every morning when i wake up or every morning that i've woke up for the past month at least i i like to go downstairs i like to sit outside and i like to just think of where i came from i like to remind myself wh- how, how far i've come man yes. you know what i'm saying i i think the perspective that that exercise offers is is invaluable especially when you combine it with just a little bit of breathing and meditation to just remind yourself how much you've fucking grown dude how much you've been through and and how you got to where you are and just you gotta hype yourself up sometimes yeah and also maybe maybe i I like to add in read some books i think it's important to stay reading and stay creative you you lose your creativity when you're a kid you're coloring you don't give a fuck you color out of the lines you just fucking don't care what anybody thinks and then you get old and you you pay attention to what everybody thinks too much you know get some plants yeah Yeah, get some plants now i got plants and i water them and i spray the water all over the cement i fucking i don't even care i watered down my whole concrete like an old Italian guy in Staten Island. This kid right, 
we gotta wrap this it up. Is, yeah, it's, 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 we went for foam we went his for mouth two hours. Foam. I'll I'll go all. This is the reason why I do podcasts. I'll do twelve. We hours. love it. I'll do two. I could have done Alex Jones at sixteen hour episode. Yeah, we love. The only it. reason impulsives up, didn't go so long is because Logan liked it, to cut it at an hour. Yeah, but now, I'll come back whenever you yeah, want. Time, Yo, to time anybody time watching the show right now, Jeff FM, great fucking guy. Really happy to see him back in uh, on the horse making content again. Uh, to anybody who has been nice to me. Thank you to anybody who's been mean to me. Maybe just be nicer. <laughs> okay. No, you're all great. Shout out Jeff's audience. Keep it going. We love you guys. Mona, he was dealing some. Man, himself a barber shop and gave us some cuss. <laughs> <laughs>